The floods of 2005 and 2013 resulted in significant risk to public safety and substantial damage to homes and infrastructure. Droughts also pose considerable threat to the environment and the reliable supply of clean water. Alberta Environment and Parks wanted to explore options to reduce the impacts of flood and drought in the Bow River Basin on Albertans and the economy. In 2015, Alberta Environment and Parks contacted the Bow River Working Group, a multi-stakeholder group of water managers and users. The group was asked to provide recommendations on how to reduce flood and drought risk and improve water management within the basin. Their report included a recommendation to complete conceptual assessments of three major reservoir options on the Bow River upstream of Calgary. The Bow River Reservoir Options Initiative builds on that report. The initiative is being approached in four phases, as shown. At the end of each phase, the Alberta government, after exploring input from Indigenous groups, interested residents, and stakeholders, will decide whether to proceed to the next phase. Through a comprehensive screening process, the Phase 1 conceptual assessment selected three reservoir options. These are referenced as the Morley, Relocated Ghost Dam, and Glenbow East options. The assessment looked at the options from a high level. It considered a number of factors to identify the approximate dam site location and reservoir details for each option. This map shows the approximate locations of the three options. All options would involve constructing a new dam. The relocated ghost dam option would also involve decommissioning the existing ghost dam. The Morley option involves creating a new reservoir between CB and Morley on Stony Nakoda Nation's reserve lands. More information will be provided in the future. The relocated ghost dam option would expand the size of the existing ghost reservoir. The new dam would be located about two and a half kilometers or more downstream of the existing dam. At its maximum water level, the expanded ghost reservoir would occupy an area of about 14 square kilometers. This is an increase of about 2.3 square kilometers. The expanded reservoir would store up to 175 million cubic meters of water. This is an increase of about 40 million cubic meters. Because of input from stakeholders, the conceptual design keeps the maximum water level of the ghost reservoir at its current maximum level. As a result, if there is a flood event, there will be no incremental impacts to the summer village of Ghost Lake and other properties around the reservoir. The Glenbow East option includes a new reservoir between Cochrane and the existing Bear Spa Dam at the western edge of Calgary. The new dam would be located about three and a half kilometers upstream of Bear Spa Dam in the existing Bear Spa Reservoir. At its maximum water level, the Glenbow East Reservoir would occupy an area of about 10 and a half square kilometers. The reservoir would store up to about 132 million cubic meters of water. The maximum level of the Glenbow East Reservoir is limited by existing development within the community of Cochrane. This photograph of the existing ghost dam and reservoir shows the typical components of a dam. If the Morley or relocated ghost option is chosen, the new dam would look similar to this. For the Glenbow East option, the geological conditions are different, so the conceptual design consists of an earth-filled dam with a concrete spillway. In addition to providing flood and drought mitigation and improved water management, hydroelectric power production is being explored for all options. As this diagram shows, the water level in a reservoir will vary depending on the time of year and the downstream water demands. In advance of the spring flood season, the reservoir could be lowered to make room for more water. During a flood event, it could be allowed to rise to the maximum level to store water. When additional water is required downstream, like during a drought, stored water could be released. Indigenous, stakeholder, and public engagement was an important part of the conceptual assessment. This pie chart shows the themes of the 1,400 comments received in Phase 1. Key messages included protect the environment and parkland, traditional land use studies are important, 
don't impact homes. Operations of Ghost Reservoir affect recreational uses. It could be challenging to move the Canadian Pacific Rail Line and provide additional advertising for public sessions so that more people can participate in engagement. The assessment confirmed that at the conceptual level, all three options could provide flood and drought storage. No comparisons between options were made. The Phase 1 report can be found on the Bow River Reservoir Options website. Building on the conceptual assessment, the Phase 2 feasibility study will examine the technical feasibility of each of the three options. The study will also assess the potential impacts and benefits of each option by considering a variety of factors, such as social, environmental, cultural, traditional land use, engineering, and economic. Cost estimates will also be prepared. Study findings will help the Alberta government decide if there is an option that should proceed to Phase 3 the engineering and regulatory approval process. The scope of work for the feasibility study focuses on three main areas, engineering, environment, and engagement. The engineering team will collect a variety of technical information and complete a number of technical studies. Geological, geotechnical, and geophysical field investigations will be conducted to collect additional information on the soil and bedrock conditions. Hydrotechnical work will be undertaken to estimate each reservoir's capacity to manage flood and drought conditions. This information, as well as information collected during the environmental and engagement activities, will help the engineering team determine the best dam location and reservoir design for each option. These designs will then be used to determine the potential impacts, costs, and benefits of each option. Building on the primary desktop review of existing information in Phase 1, the environmental team will carry out a number of field studies to collect additional information. Some of the subjects to be studied include vegetation and wetlands, wildlife, soils, groundwater, fisheries, land and resource use, traditional land use, social impacts, and historical resources. Information gathered through these field studies will help the team understand how building a dam and reservoir could affect the environment and people in the study area. The feasibility study will include opportunities for Indigenous groups, stakeholders, and the public to provide input on the reservoir options. Engagement opportunities will include online activities, virtual meetings, and public information sessions. Initial engagement activities will focus on a key question. What factors do you feel Alberta Environment and Parks should consider when evaluating the three reservoir options? Environmental, social, economic, other. Participants will also have the opportunity to share questions and concerns about the options. Input gathered through engagement activities will be used to develop and prioritize the criteria for evaluating the reservoir options. And, in option evaluation, it will also be used to enhance communication and engagement activities. Input received during the feasibility study will also be used to inform any future phases. The Phase 2 feasibility study is an important step in Alberta Environment and Parks efforts to find ways to reduce the impacts of flood and drought on Albertans and the economy. The Feasibility Study Report is currently scheduled to be submitted to Alberta Environment and Parks in the spring of 2023. For more information on this study, visit our website. To participate in engagement activities, go to our engagement portal and, if you have questions, you can contact us by email or phone. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the Bow River Reservoir Options Initiative.